Thanks so much for making our tails wag by watching this guest interview from Arden Moore's Four-Legged Life. Welcome back to Arden Moore's Four-Legged Life show. Hey, our next guest knows how to help dogs and cats shake off and be able to uh, relax. She is the owner and chief veterinarian at Apple Brook Animal Hospital in a very hard to pronounce town in Tennessee. She is also the nation's first fear-free certified professional, and she's a one great friend. Please give pause and applause to the remarkable Dr. Catherine Prim. I am so jazzed you're on the show, Dr. Cat. Hey, I'm, I'm just so excited that you invited me. Because oh, I no. love talking to you. It's so much fun. Well, you've got my pets in Arts Den. I'll tune in. We got pet safety cat Casey to, <laughs> and sleeping wakey wakey Kona and Casey because this show also airs on the internet. Hey, in the first half of our show, we were talking with Dr. Robin Downing about pain. And we want to talk to you, Dr. Cat, about what's going on with two things that we can have a role in helping and that's stress and anxiety in our pets um you know tell us first what the heck fear free is because people need to know well um fear free is kind of an initiative that has sort of taken the country by storm um to try and make sure that veterinary hospitals are not a source of fear because you know i i make jokes when i speak about fear free but when i was a little girl and i played with barbie dolls and i pretended that my barbie doll was a veterinarian and um, <laughs> of course at, you did of course i did at no at no point did ever barbie's patients hide from her oh or not want to see her like in my fantasy i never imagined that pets would not love me and that I would oh. not be the, the best thing they had ever, you know, their best friend. And um, so when I got into practice and, and that started to happen and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm doing things into these pets that they're afraid of. And so when I came across the fear free story um, and met Marty Becker and all of those things, that's another story. We, if we have time, we can oh, get yeah, into that. But definitely. Um, I realized I have control over this. And yeah. so, um, you know, the other day I saw a new little puppy and um, I saw some signals of, of anxiety. The puppy was only about seven weeks old, but so I did everything wow. in my toolbox, you know, to try to make the visit better. And um, it just so happened when I went out, I walked outside after that appointment to go to my kennel, which is another building. And the little puppy was there. The owner was letting the little puppy sniff around in the grass the puppy saw me and her face lit up and she <gasps> ran to me and i was like oh my gosh this is it you was, are a rock star i was so thrilled by that so well let's talk about that puppy wow. example because that's a, a good one when people hear about fear free i know it's supposed to be about fas fear anxiety and stress and try to relieve that this is a very young puppy who is seven weeks old and what is the fun name uh, uh, of the town in which the Applewood Animal Hospital is in Tennessee that I always mispronounce? Uh, Applebrook is located in Ultwa, Tennessee, which Ultwa. is just north of Chattanooga, which is easier to say. And it's uh, Havana White Delight. It's O-O-L-T-E-W-A-H. So we have right. four vowels. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what specifically were some things you did that might help our, 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 our audience about what you did with that little seven week old puppy to make them say, Hey, there's Dr. Cat. I love that lady. Just met her. She's awesome. Well, I, um, I utilized pheromones on my clothes and in my um, exam area. And of course my assistant pheromones are chemical messages that pets send to one another. And um, the dog one that I use is one that has been simulated to mimic uh, the hormone that the mother dog releases near her mammary glands when oh. the puppies are nursing. So it makes puppies feel safe and comfortable, like familiar. So I started with that. I carry a basket. Um, everybody teases me about my little red riding hood basket. I don't have my basket here because it's oh, at okay. work, but um, <laughs> it, it's full of different treats and um, fear free calls it the treat ladder. So there's, you know, things like squeeze cheese and pepperoni treats and um, I'm hungry. OK, yeah, <laughs> see, and so was that puppy. So the first thing I tried for the puppy, the puppy wasn't interested in. And the second thing I tried, she was. 
And so then after she felt comfortable eating the first, the second thing, she went back for the first one. Oh. So, you know, as her comfort level got more and more um, just raised and we recognized her, her approval of us, I guess, um, then we moved forward with things and we were able to distract her from the scary things. So you were doing what kind of an exam on, on this cute? It was a time? first puppy. It was just a first puppy visit. And what does that entail? Is that included in a vaccination? Um, in this case, I don't, maybe one, yeah. but um, of course the stethoscope is a little frightening. Pets do not like for, for me to have something in my hands. That, okay. is, that is something that I've just noticed that the stethoscope is frightening. So my assistant can do the treats and I can kind of sneak in with the stethoscope and, you know, just keep, t and they don't ever know because it doesn't hurt. Why do right. they, you know, I make sure I warm it up, but um, having something in my hands, having the stethoscope around my neck is a big no, no. I've learned that oh, the pet's power from me when I have that. So. Yeah. And so, Hey everyone, we're talking to Dr. Catherine Prim. She operates the Apple Brook animal hospital and she has also got the distinction of being the first certified professional in Fear Free. And then you just got another title, right? Is Guinness knocking on your door? Um, <laughs> you got some other hyped up thing. In addition to being the first, you got some other certified with them. Oh, you my remember? whole practice is certified now. Okay, there you go. Yes, okay, yes. that's that's awesome. So fearfree.com is it fearfreepets.com. Is, is a good place for people to go to after uh, you and I chat. But I'm, you just said some things that I think we don't even realize. First, you're getting the nose to feel, ah, with these uh, uh, canine uh, 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 pheromones. You can name the product if you want. I don't care. Um, but you spray it or there's a diffuser, right? right? But you're also paying attention to what you're wearing and maybe what you say and how the art of distraction. I like that. Can you expand a little bit on that? Yes. Yeah, so um, that's huge. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't do the fear free thing without distraction. So, you know, and I don't know how much of a role it plays for human beings because okay. we're so smart. I don't know if you could distract us from a needle stick, but I can usually distract a puppy or a kitten from a needle stick. Okay. And they, it just depends. You have to have a, a high value treat, right? So yeah. something that's worth it. And I tell the client as I'm doing my exam, you know what? He's not going to feel this. She's not going to notice this. If I do everything right, it's going to be nothing but good for this visit. So they're kind of on board with me, I which, like that. which is awesome too. So you also maybe have the vet tech or assistant touch a part of the dog while you're putting, or the cat, the injection site. So can, because I, I want people to know that's kind of a game changer because, you know, it isn't just one point of contact, right? Right. And so um, in the olden days, which I'm now old enough to kind of, <laughs> of veterinary not. medicine, um, always the pets were restrained oh. for things. And um, we know now that animals resent restraint because it makes them feel very vulnerable, like they're going to be attacked. Good and point. it also signals to them. And we and we can talk a little bit more about all the things we signal to our pets with our body language, but it also signals to them, hey, something bad is about to happen. So we at Applebrook do not restrain pets. We support pets because I need the puppy to not be a moving target while I'm trying to give it a <laughs> vaccine. But also if you hold that puppy down, it's just instinct to fight that. Oh so my gosh, um, absolutely. I am just so grateful that there is the fear free pet movement now and you're on board and everyone we are speaking with dr katherine prim she's at applebrook animal hospital in tennessee and we're going to talk more to, with her after the break and some signal miscues that we may give that we can avoid and keep our pets dogs and cats feeling happy and confident so you all know the drill sit and stay we'll be right back Hey, we're back to Arden Moore's Four-Legged Life Show. We're chatting with Dr. Catherine Prim, who is best known as Cat, Dr. Cat. I love that with a K. And I would be remiss if I also don't uh, mention, in addition to running a very successful animal practice and being one of being the very first veterinarian in the world to be certified in fear-free pets, she is also um, a host of not one. <laughs> 
but two very great podcast shows on Pet Life Radio. And I have the show Oh Behave on that network. But Dr. Cat, why don't you tell everybody the name the names of your two shows on Pet Life Radio? Well, um my show is Nine Lives with Dr. Cat. So I guess if you've really thought about it, you might come up with that. Um, and the other one is Dr. Cat Gone to the Dogs. I like it. You've been doing that for a number of years. What do you enjoy uh, most about being behind a microphone instead of wearing a stethoscope? Oh, gosh, I think it's that I reach so many more and different people. I get a lot of emails from people in other countries asking me things. Um, and that's just, oh, that's uh, that's just cool. an opportunity to, to impact this whole industry, I think. Now, we started to talk a little bit about some uh-ohs that we want to avoid. So you talked about that pets don't like to be restrained. I, I really love that. My veterinarian in Dallas is also fear-free, and she gets on the floor with some of the dogs and the kitties have real comfortable things. What's going on with the stainless steel table? Let's talk with that first. Um, I donated my um, hydraulic lift table. Okay. Because it was horrifying because not only was it cold and stainless steel, but it made a noise when it oh. lifted. So um, I donated it and it's gone. I have uh, tables that fold down from the wall. Oh, okay. Because there are some pets that really do better. Now we always put, a soft, warm mat or whatever, but there are some pets that, that are used to being handled in that way and would prefer it. And you just have to pay attention to the pet and to the owner. Oh. Ask questions. Uh, the owner knows, you, I mean, you know your pet better than I do for sure. So. so I like this table that comes off the wall, but you probably also do some things right on the floor, right? Uh, most things. The, really? the table doesn't come down very much. I so have, um, I'm, I'm going to give you two scenarios. I had okay. a 90-pound Bernese Mountain Dog named Bujo. She's up in heaven now that was terrified of going to the vet clinic. And you don't want a 90-pound Bernese Mountain Dog drooling, defecating, and all that. Oh, but no. thanks to Fear Free, was totally cool. And then I have a 17-year-old black cat named Mikey who would do the same and now sleeps in her carrier, in his carrier, and purrs during the exam. So I guess the point is people like you can help us make sure that the vet clinic is not a source of terror, right? Absolutely. I actually get a lot of clients from kind of a far distance because oh. of my fear free. Um, and these are pets that have been traumatized, you know, not really anybody's fault, right? Just, just handled wrong. A lot of them maybe over nail trims. That's the number one thing. Oh. Uh, they went to a, a big box store that the, the people there are on a time crunch and they just grab the dog or the cat and they hold it down. And that creates lifetime bad memories that I have to deal with. And in those cases, I many times have to include pharmaceuticals okay. um, to, to help overcome because fear is never forgotten. You know, that's, that's a really that's good point. Yeah. And I know I'm not a chemist, I'm not a pharmacist, but there's a, is one that seems to be a game changer. Is it gabapentin? Yes. Well, gabapentin is a game changer for cats in, and, in my practice. And why is that? Um, gabapentin creates a sense of well-being in the brain chemistry of the cat. Oh. So um, it's not like a sedative. Uh, people push back and say, oh, I don't want a sedator. It's not a sedative, but you can create positive associations. Mm -hmm. I even had a cat that really didn't like to go to work with me. And with gabapentin, he became the most popular patient in my private. Everybody would be like, why don't you bring Scamper in today? I mean, you know, <laughs> he um, and it was because the gabapentin created a positive association with his cat carrier, with being in the nice. car you know, all of those things. And he would purr and put his paws through the bars. I think the hand. world could use a little dose of gab. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Can and it's I not long term, it? isn't it? It's, it? it's it is for a finite time. Correct. Correct. What about for dogs? What would be something to give them a chill factor? Chill canines? Um, I use a lot of trazodone. However, and for all the people watching and listening to this, it is a cocktail um, that is specific to your pet. So talk oh. with your veterinarian because there are tons of options. We have tons of safe, effective options, but each one may not work for your pet. I or like you may need a combination. I mean, you know, it, it's something that you should work with your veterinarian to figure out. But the bottom line is 21st century pets now, 
thanks to folks like you, may not be so afraid of going to the vet. Absolutely. Because you already started that seven-week-old puppy. She's off on, on the right paw, right? Yes. <laughs> little diamond. She, her name is diamond. Oh, so of course. <laughs> she's, she's a little diamond in the rough, but yes, I am. And her owner was very thrilled. He drove, he said he drove a long way. So. Wow. <laughs> Dr. Cat, I understand you have a motto at the um, Applewood Animal Hospital. What is it? It is where state of art meets state of heart. And what does that mean? Um, that means we still have all the technological advances and we still use the, the highest quality vaccinations. We still have radiology. We still do dentistry, but we care how that seems to your pet. So we have policies in place that ensure the pet is comfortable. And what kind of pets do you have? Um, I have a dog right now. Um, my cat scamper that I was telling you about um, passed away unexpectedly. And so um, you know, I think that as a veterinarian, pets come, the right pet just comes. So I'm not going to force finding a, a cat to love because I think that the right cat will find me. Someone will yeah. come in or yep. I, that's just how it has always worked for me. But you, your dog's name Sky, right? Yes, yeah, Sky. I remembered. <laughs> What's Sky like? Sky is a standard poodle that I rescued from a very, um, bad situation. A friend of mine found her on like Craigslist or somewhere. And uh -huh. she said, Kat, you've, you've got to take this dog. And so we drove to a city. Um, she drove to a city about 45 minutes away and picked up this dog. And, and um, I've had her ever since I've had her for about eight years. Oh, nice. Now we we given some tips about inside the vet clinic. We've got a couple minutes left. What are some things that people can do with their dogs and cats to help reduce fear and anxiety. We're in the summer, there's fireworks, there's people traveling. What would be a couple of good tips you could give our, our folks? Um, gosh, there are so many things and talking to your veterinarian is, is yes. the way to tailor it to your pet, but um, never forget the positive impact on the brain chemistry from exercise. Oh, so um, if you can play with your pet exercise each day, because cats, uh, cats and dogs both love a routine. Mm -hmm. If you can make that a priority, a part of your day each day, it's good for you and it's good for your pet. That, that would it. probably be the biggest one. And what about the 4th of July? What any tips to help uh, our pets that really don't like the boom and the bang? Um, same thing, kind of, I guess, talk to your veterinarian because you may need some pharmaceutical intervention. But if you can muffle the sound, um, I even have some of my clients that put cotton balls in their dog's ears, play soft music or Good. white noise, um, white noise on like on an iPad or something like that, the sound of a fan, a safe place. And I think most importantly, your body language can trigger the pet that there is a reason to be afraid. So maybe don't you start looking out the window and going, <laughs> okay, do you, think, do you think it's time? Is it getting dark? You know, try to calm yourself as well. And don't apologize, right? And, and don't apologize. Hey, we're speaking with Dr. Um, Catherine Prim. I want you to check out applebrookanimal.com. She is an amazing gal. She's one of the leaders in the fear-free movement that reduces fear, anxiety, and stress in our dogs and our cats and any any i'm just jazzed that you could be on our show today dr cat thank you so much for inviting me i'm thrilled to be here <laughs> hey that's it for our show today i want to thank our wonderful sponsor uh tevra they make great pet products i also want to thank all you pet pals for tuning in and of course all the stations airing our show coast to coast so until next time this is Arden Moore saying to all you two, three, and four Lakers out there, pause up. Thanks so much for making our tails wag by watching this guest interview from Arden Moore's Four Legged Life. Four Legged Life. Make sure to subscribe so you're up to date with all of our Four Legged Life content. Four Legged Life. Four Legged Life.